Welcome to the Wild Spire Conversations podcast. You get to be a fly on the wall for my intimate coaching sessions with inspiring entrepreneurs who are changing the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Benedetto Padovani, wild creation coach and soul storyteller at The Awakened Business, where I help coaches, therapists, and creative entrepreneurs craft an irresistible message and broadcast it to the world. In each conversation, I'll ask curious, playful questions, challenging us to connect with the deeper purpose and joy of what we're here to do. We may experience one or more of the following, articulation of their soul's message and mission, life-changing stories, insights, ahas, and wisdom nuggets, ideas for new products, services, or businesses. Truth is, I have no idea exactly what will emerge, because there's no agenda for this conversation. Anything can happen when we step into the unknown of infinite creativity. And that's where we're going to play. It's time to get Wildspired. My guest and conversational companion today is Esther Lemons. Esther is a creator, artist, budding writer, and podcaster who calls herself a rebel with a cause. Her superpower is being highly sensitive as well as intuitive. She's also a crazy cat lady, Trekkie, and self-confessed nerd. Esther also knows how to speak Klingon, so be sure to ask her about it when you speak with her. Her motto is, do your thing your way. And she loves helping unconventional entrepreneurs translate their unique soul into beautiful visuals. She passionately believes in authentic, non-apologetic, and radical self-expression for all. Her podcast and the Fifty Shades of Gender Project explore the diverse range of gender identities without judgment, while providing a platform for authenticity and self-expression for those that fall between or outside of binary, stereotypical, male, or female. So make sure that you check out Esther's podcast, Fifty Shades of Gender, available on all podcast apps. In this conversation, Esther asks, how can I attract more of the right people to my podcast? So one of those ways is for me to give you a little nudge to check it out right here. We also explore more of them in this conversation. We discuss who the right people are and how to find them. This is a process that you can follow along with and modify for yourself and your own podcast or content that you're putting out to reach your soulmate clients. So join us for this meandering, inspiring, and thoroughly enjoyable and vulnerable conversation with Esther Lemons. Hi, Esther. Thank you for joining me here today. Hello, Stephanie. (laughs) Lovely to speak to you as always. Well, you said that like a song. I really like that. Oh, nice. I'm just, I'm just bouncing. I sit on this bouncy ball and it's just, it just kind of happens that way. Okay. Anyway. (laughs) It it gives you an experience of floating. We're levitating together. Very nice. I like it. It does a bit. Yeah. So I am wondering, we have this time together for a conversation in which we can create and do and play with whatever you'd like. So Mm -hmm. If we did something that was truly extraordinary during this conversation, what would that be? Wow, that's an interesting question. I, I lo- always like the idea of setting intentions and then sort of letting things unfold. So mm-hmm. I think it, 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 it will be. It will be cool, whatever it is, right? So, But that obviously doesn't help you, does it? So... <laughs> If it would be extraordinary, what would it be? Is that what you asked? So yeah. You know. what, what would you like to create and receive in this time together that would be really extraordinary? Mm-hmm. Like, even if you could come away with one thing that was just really extraordinary, what would it be? And then we'll let it go and see what happens. Hmm. Okay. Maybe something to do with attracting the right people to my podcast. Ah. Yeah. So who are who would the right people be? Good question again. So I'm aiming I think because my my podcast is about stories from gender diverse people. So in a way it is for people who may be gender questioning. It's also for people who are interested in learning more about gender diversity. So, yeah, those would be the two 
types of people I'm aiming at. Yeah. And I'm curious, okay, so you'd like to attract people who are gender questioning and interested in learning more about gender diversity to mm -hmm. your podcast. What, what are you, what do you hope to accomplish with this podcast? Like, do you have a mission or we could, that might be too lofty. Like, what would you like to do with it? Oh, I definitely have a mission. Um, Wow. Yeah. It's, it's not hard to put into words, but in a way maybe it is as well. It's, I think it comes from a place of, cause I'm, I'm a cisgender person. I'm a, I'm a cisgender woman. So I, I do not completely understand what it's like to have an experience that differs from that, you know, to be transgender or identify as non-binary or intersex or anything like that. But I can be, empathic about it and supportive about it so what was your question i'll be saying that a lot because i go off on a tangent sometimes and i'm like where were we going with that <laughs> so i'm wondering okay let me rephrase the question a little bit if you could create any change in the world with your podcast what mm. would it be what change would you create Ooh, I like that question. I would create more understanding and acceptance for other gender experiences. And, and to be honest, for, for each individual experience, because one of my main passions, I think, is self-expression. And even though my gender journey is not unusual, um, I do feel like Self-expression is something that I've I feel like I've only just started to discover what it's really about and how looking back, like in hindsight, how I always maybe tried to fit in and therefore was not who I am. And it's, mm. it's a journey of discovery. I feel like self-discovery and self-creation. I like to see it as this lovely yin and yang of self-discovery and self-creation, like finding out who you are and finding out what you want or who you want to be. And there's a, there's a really lovely flow in that and there's a balance in that. And I feel like even, even if you feel quite confident or good about who you are and where you are, there's always more to uncover, mm. you know? And I feel like I've been, I've, I've been working as a graphic designer for, for a long time. And it is something that I really do enjoy, especially working on books. And I've helped some unconventional people with their books, which I really love. And as I said, I enjoy that. That feels good to do that and to see the end result and hold that book in your hands. But this gender project, that is of a different caliber mm -hmm. altogether. And I feel like only now am I doing what I was put on this earth to do? That's really kind of what it feels like. And I just get overwhelmed with this sense of, um, what is it? Like earlier today, I was audio editing. And th there is a lot to learn. So it's out of my comfort zone. It's a new thing for me. There's lots to learn and discover. But as I'm doing it, even though some days I think, am I, why am I doing this? Is it worth doing? There are so many other voices out there and they're doing a much better job than I am. But then I think, well, actually, it's all good, really. There's, there's no, nothing wrong with having more voices. There needs to be, or there need to be more voices. So, and I'm in a position where I'm just doing it my way. And I feel like I do have a really clear focus about it. So I, I want people to, yeah, just, just learn and just listen to people. Because mm. we it's easy to judge what you don't understand. And we've all done it. I've done it. No one's perfect. But, you know, you can change your mind. And you may have certain beliefs and feelings about a subject. But then you meet someone and you talk to them. And then you think, you know what? I was way off. And I, I, I feel enlightened and, and educated and I know so much more now. 
you know mm. yeah so what i heard you say and feel free to correct change add modify to this is that if you could create any change in the world with your podcast it would be to create more understanding to help people listen and understand not only the gender experience of course that's where the project is happening right mm -hmm. around the gender experience but around self-expression so that mm -hmm. more people like the change in the world you'd like to help bring about is that people can be discover express themselves who they are what they are who they want to be as a journey of discovery mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah and another thing that i like to think about is acceptance versus tolerance because mm. to be completely honest i think tolerance is bullshit tolerance is putting up with this thing i'm not happy with or that you know, that I really don't want to be there or that shouldn't be around or that shouldn't be allowed, you know, there's judgment there. Whereas acceptance is just about letting other people be who they are and I'm here being who I am and there's space for everything. So to me, there is a clear difference there. So that's mm. why I'm not a fan of the word tolerance. Mm. Uh, so acceptance is a big part of yeah. your mission here too. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't you give me, I would love for you to give me, would you please give me, I'll ask for it, <laughs> a little bit, give me an introduction. I saw this lovely post that you had shared um, in Facebook, like, hi, my name is Esther. I'm a cisgender woman with my pronoun. You know, like, could you yes. just, would you do that for me? I just want to capture that and have the experience of it firsthand you mean that particular piece or just you introduce yourself to me and in in the context of like yeah. a gender introduction as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so when I mean when I speak to people what I ask is how do you identify and what does that mean to you because the labels all mean different things to different people so I am now making a habit of and I see more and more people do this which is great to um, put my pronouns in, like to my into my my email signature, things like that. And um, so, if I wanted to introduce myself from the perspective of gender, I would say, "Hi, I'm Esther. I am a cisgender woman, or I, I identify as a cisgender woman. My pronouns are she and her." And it's, in all honesty, it's not something most people would even think about. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you take it a step further, which is also following a post I saw in a group I'm in, if you reverse the roles, like what you would ask, gen what you would ask gender diverse people, when did you know you were trans, or when did you know you were non-binary, and all that stuff? Well, when did I know I was cisgender? When did you know you were cis? And you're like, whoa, hang on a minute, <laughs> what does that mean? And what does it mean to be a woman? Now you know the can of worms is open, isn't it? Because that's not a simple answer. There is no simple answer to that question. Because you're talking about there's your your sex, which is your biology. So you have your your body parts. You know, it's mostly body parts, and also mm -hmm. chromosomes, hormones, things like that, all to do with the body. Then there's gender identity and gender expression, which is more of a social construct, but nonetheless important. And then there's also sexuality, is about who you're attracted to. So gender is about who you are and gen or oh, sexuality is who you're attracted to. And I, it's funny because the more I learn about it, I feel about the subject of gender, the less I understand it, like in the more questions I have. And sometimes I think, oh, I get it. It's no, it's gone. You know, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I kind of get about this and what seems to be so appealing to you or one of the things that's appealing about this conversation is that it's like that. Like the deeper you go, the more you realize you don't know. Like because mm. so many of these things which in society we put into nice little categories and give labels to, when you really start asking the questions and go underneath, it's like oh, we can't even really begin to really answer this. Like it's a question we keep living into. It's a discovery. It's a an exploration of 
wow, what does this mean to me? I've never thought about that question you just posed. Like, mm. how did how how did I know I was cisgender? Yeah. Do, do I even know that I'm cisgender? Exactly. Like, what what does that mean exactly? Or and you you're asking like, what does that mean to you when you say? Mm -hmm. You know, if someone says, um, I'm a demigirl, I've seen this phrase used, or um, mm -hmm. intersex, or, you know, like how the mm -hmm. different ways we can describe ourselves. Wow. So it's really like a, like a new frontier in a way. Yeah, it is. And although these labels are more and more spoken about, and they have their generic definitions, if you speak to two different people about being non-binary, they'll have two different experiences. Speak to 10 people, you'll have 10 different ones, 100, 100, you know, and so on. So it means something different to everyone, which is really interesting, I find. So yeah. it, it really opens up a conversation for people to ask a question. And what does that mean to you? Like you really get to mm. lead. And what does that mean to you? Not just like what label do you put on this and how should I behave in certain situations in order to be inclusive, but going deeper, a step deeper to and what does that mean to you? And mm -hmm. what was your journey in coming to that meaning? Exactly. And that also means that you, you can't be wrong. Because if you if you ask someone, what does non-binary mean? Then people can say, no, actually, that is not what it means. Or actually, that is not complete. Or, you know, anything like that. But if you ask, what does it mean to you? There's no wrong answer. Because that's what it means to you. And you're having this experience. And someone else is having another experience. And they're all valid. So... Yeah. Mm. So I find it, it's an expansive way of approaching it rather than a contracting way or a conflicting or confronting way. Yeah. Yeah. And perhaps that is what you bring in particular, you know, through you, through the, the joy that you have in this exploration and discovery that I'm guessing, I, I'm pretty sure without even looking, that the other voices out there in this conversation don't bring in quite that way. You know, like there's something unique about you and the way you see the world. Mm, yeah, and I think, I mean, obviously, I think that's true for everyone. But yeah, I do, I do agree that, uh, to be honest, I have not looked around at every single, you know, platform there is out there about gender, obviously, because I couldn't, because there's so many, I'm sure. But yeah, this, this is my contribution to the subject. And I find a lot of places are very for good reason, you know, and that's their, that's their part in, in this. They're very political or they're very activist or, you know, very, what's the word? Very anti-establishment. And like I say, there's a good reason for that. And there's definitely mm -hmm. a place for that. For me, though, for my platform and for what I'm doing, I want to keep the doors open and keep the conversation going and I have to be true to certain, well, not just my own values, because, well, interestingly, a couple of weeks ago, I, I've always known, right, because I, I know my experience is not that of other people who are gender diverse, you know, and so I'm, I'm come from a cis perspective. And as I said, I can never completely understand what it's like to go through an experience that is different from that. But as I said, I have my own, I hold a certain space for this project, right? I think that's what it is. So a while ago, like a couple of weeks ago, I, I'm a kind of a happy go lucky person and I see the positive in things and the positive in everyone. And I share uplifting stuff. And um, that's not to mean that you have to be positive all the time and there's no space for anything else. Of course not. But I do like to look, you know, I like to look on the bright side of things, I suppose. So a couple of weeks ago, I shared something on the page, and it was a positive message about the police. And some people actually said to me, look, that's really insensitive, because that is not the experience of a lot of gender diverse people. Mm. And looking back now, in hindsight, I can, I can kind of rationalize it, but at the time, it was really confronting for me. It was like I, I felt physically sick and I felt like I'd been punched in the gut hmm. because I'm a really sensitive person. And to be called insensitive, you know, it's, it's a big deal. But also at the same time, 
it was not about me. It was completely not about me. So I talked to my partner, who's part of the project, uh, as a consultant. Basically, they, they take on a consulting role. And uh, yeah, we talked about it. And in the end, I, t I took the post down because I reflected on it. And I thought, yes, what I did was an insensitive thing. That doesn't mean I'm insensitive, but I did do an insensitive thing. I did not mean to, but I did. Mm. So I had to make it right. And I also messaged the two people that commented on it and made me aware because they did say, you need to educate yourself on this. And they were right, you know. So um, yeah, I did, I suppose. <laughs> you know, And I, I moved forward in, in a big way, I think. And it was a real big learning experience for me. And it, it also made it very clear how even though I am – a big part of this project obviously there are other factors involved like my partner who's consulting and obviously all the people I'm having conversations with but the the project itself is very much its own entity as well and I have to sometimes separate my own views and values from the project and who I'm mm -hmm. trying to be an ally for in order to be a good ally because by, by saying it's, it was kind of like in, in my own way, I, I said all lives matter. Basically, that's what mm. I said. Mm. And yes, they do. Of course they do. But that's not helpful. Right. right. So just don't. <laughs> Basically, that's what I did. And I realized it. And, and I, you know, I changed my, not standpoint, but I mean, I, I changed my, not approach. What am I trying to say? I made it, I made it right. You know, I corrected, I corrected it. Basically, that's what I mean. Yeah. So this is, I knew it was going to be a learning curve for me. And I knew I would, I would fuck up. <laughs> I knew I would fuck up. And there you go. I fucked up. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So that was an interesting one. I don't know how we got onto that, but okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to take the meandering path to wherever it is we're going, and it's we kind, shall it's see kind of where my path. we are. Yeah. Yes, I, yeah. and I like this. I'm I'm surrendered to it as well. I like it. Um, so there's something that I'd love to highlight from what you just said, which was the way that you, the willingness you're walking your talk, right? It's not about perfection. Mm -hmm. It's not about defining all the terms mm -hmm. and getting it right because we know mm -hmm. that that's a losing battle. We, we can't. Everyone's experience is so different that we couldn't possibly understand or share exactly what things mean for different people. And inevitably, at some point, we're going to step in it. We're going to say mm -hmm. the wrong thing ignorantly, yep. innocently, however we say it. And what I, what I heard and what I saw in, in your description here is like, well, you, it, was conf it felt confronting at first, like, oh, my God, I'm being called insensitive when it's one of the values that you promote is this expansiveness and inclusivity and dialogue and sensitivity is a part of what you're being. Like, oh, my goodness, it's like that's exactly the opposite of what you'd like to present exactly. and be in yeah. the world. And yet... Mm -hmm you stepped back and, and reflected and spoke to someone you trust and realized, oh, this isn't about me. And I think that's the beautiful piece here. It wasn't about you. It was, is this behavior giving, have, creating the intention that I truly desire? And your mm -hmm. intention is to be sensitive and your intention is to be inclusive and your intention is to expand and be positive. And was that, like, that's your true intention in it. And you were mm -hmm. able to see that oh, wow, that posting of it, it is insensitive, but I'm not insensitive. Mm. It's like, a, like maybe this behavior could be interpreted that way legitimately. I really see that now on reflecting on it. Mm. It's like, um, so I, I've been thinking a lot about this type of conversation in the context of race in particular because of what's really bubbled up um, in society of late. And that if we can separate the thought or the behavior from ourselves and our identity, you know, it's like mm -hmm. we will have intolerant, insensitive, 
racialized conditioned thinking that appears in our mind. Mm -hmm. It's not me. And that doesn't excuse me from being responsible for my actions and my words. I'm not saying that at all, right? Like I'm Mm -hmm. still responsible. But when I can see it as something separate from myself, I'm not so defensive about it. Trying, I, can't, I have to push that away because if I acknowledge it, it means that I am sexist or I am, I don't know what the word is with gender, gender intolerant or insensitive. Or transphobic. Or transphobic, or, um, right. Transphobic doesn't obviously sum it all up, but bigoted, I think, maybe one word. Yeah. yeah. Does it mean if I notice a bigoted thought in my head, does that mean mm-hmm. that I am therefore a bigot? When our world has been surrounded with that, we've been conditioned absolutely yeah. unknowingly, I, it's inevitable that I'm going to find that. I'm going to discover it if I'm willing to see it. But in order to change it, I have to be willing to see it. And in order to be willing to see it, it needs to, I need to be comfortable enough to look at it, to look for it, and to seek it out. Um, that's the mm. conversation that I kind of see you having and modeling in yourself. Like, wow, if you're going to put these things out there, you've got to be open to looking even deeper, reflecting even more, and noticing mm. where those things innocently come up in you. And I think yeah. that if we can see that you're doing the very best you can and that everyone is, we can all take part in this conversation. And there's my optimism coming in. Like, we can all talk Mm. about it. Because I don't think anyone, if they really understood how some of the things that we do and say can be deeply hurtful to people, Mm. if they really got it, and I don't just mean, like, intellectually, but they got the full body experience, I don't think they would do it. And just like for you, as soon as you saw that, oh, wow, I didn't realize, you just, you notice something new and it changed, something shifted, and now you'll notice it the next time, and you'll, your behavior will inevitably be different. Yeah, I know better now. (laughs) Yeah. And it's good, because I knew I was willing to be wrong, and willing to be, you know, called out for it, I suppose. Um, and yeah, like you say, it's about not taking it personal. Although obviously it kind of is personal, but it's kind of like I've I've just not read but listened to the audiobook for Untamed by Glennon Doyle. I don't know mm. if you've heard of it. I have, yeah. And it's amazing. And it just made me go, yeah, you know, so many times. And she was telling there was a piece about how she was called a racist when she was trying to actually stand up for people of color and, and do you know, activist things and do a good thing with, with that in mind. And she got called out for being a racist and she actually reflected on that and said, I've got racism in me because that's the culture and the society that I grew up in. And that's the way I've been conditioned. And it's true. And and for women as well, there will be misogyny in us as women. There is, it's, it's all ingrained. It's all, it's all in there. And it's about, just acknowledging that it's there you're not wrong when you you know when you acknowledge that but it is i think it's wrong to deny it it's the same with the whole race conversation right so same same thing in a way yeah mm. yeah thank you for sh- and thank you for being so so open and sharing that too mm. so i'm drawn to ask you about your contrarian views around gender. Would you mm-hmm. be willing to share that? Like Define, what? Yeah, what, let me, what you mean? I want to yeah. say what I mean by that. <laughs> so I like this word contrarian and I use it a lot. Yeah. Um, so what do you believe about gender that most people disagree with? That well, what I've learned, you know, from my own privileged perspective, obviously, um, I believe that gender is not binary and sex is not binary either. Gender is a construct. Um, the more I learn about it, like the more I'm questioning, like, yeah, what does it mean to be cis? What does it mean to be 
a woman or female and you it, it's it's inevitable to see the patriarchy in that and a white supremacist view in that and the conditioning that comes with that and it's it, if i think about you know being a woman and maybe the gender roles in society i think it's something that i've always rebelled against and I mean, for myself, I've never wanted to get married or have children. It's just from when I was young, it's just something I've never wanted. Um, yeah, so maybe that was part of that as well, like a hint of rebellion towards all that. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you really want. But I think a lot of people do it because it's the done thing. It's mm. what you do. It's, it's how society works and it's how you're supposed to live. And I'm all about thinking, what don't, why don't you ask yourself what you want? If it's what you want, then brilliant, then do that. And I know, I know several women, all they wanted all their lives was to get married and have kids and they're really, really happy. And that's, that's perfect for them. Um, and another thing as well, for example, is that we, we are so conditioned that we police each other. You know, if a woman says, I don't want to have children, I'm not having children, the most grief she gets is from other women, mm. you know. And, and what I'm thinking is like, just because I don't want kids doesn't mean I think you were wrong having yours. It doesn't mean no one should have. It just means this is my way. This is my truth. And that's it. And so, hence, I can't be wrong. <laughs> because it's my truth, right? And you have yours, and they have theirs, and so on. Yeah. Hmm. So these things that you believe, gender's not binary. It's a construct. Sex is not binary. There's a mystery in that one, too. Mm -hmm. That we've been conditioned, and even, like, in these we've been conditioned to want what society says we should want to think that that's normal in many cases. Mm -hmm. Yep. Maybe even to, to not want it and then question ourselves and doubt ourselves and make ourselves wrong right. because we don't want what society thinks that we should want. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And the and thing is even, even what with what is normal, right? Th <laughs> these things that when we look around ourselves and in society, it's normal now, but if you look back, in like there were times before certain religions came to certain areas or before certain areas were colonized, there was a lot more gender fluidity um, acceptance before that happened, you know, but it was all kind of wiped out in, you know, colonization and religious propaganda and all that kind of stuff. I have no problem with religion. It's just not for me either. <laughs> I, I like it if, it if it gives someone a sense of community and support and love for humankind and, and nature and everything else. That's a beautiful thing. But if it is used to excuse and justify, you know, bigotry and hate then i'm not a big fan you know <laughs> so there's, there's all these there's all these sides to it and it can be used for either of those things uh yeah so hmm. so i'm wondering how you can get this message you can connect this message with the people who so who are open to it who are like it sounds like these people are either in a gender conversation themselves personally or in their lives or they're curious and they want to know mm -hmm. so part of the way that i suspect you can do this is by highlighting these areas of where you have an alternative view um mm -hmm. i thought just that post that i saw in the facebook group where you introduced yourself was a very simple and it's a non-confrontational way to introduce the conversation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not saying that you have to be non-confrontational but this one just happened to be 
very easy to receive and it puts a question in people's minds what does that mean yeah how would I introduce myself I, I found myself thinking that I'm like hmm <laughs> that's interesting and seeing the answers that people would have or how they responded to it my stepson um, I was talking with him the other day and he said that he uses slack at work and in his slack profile he added his pronouns which happened to be he him in his case mm -hmm. and some of his coworkers said what why did you put that there what does that mean because they just didn't know mm -hmm. and so he was able to start a conversation and open up a dialogue and explain to them and they added it to their profiles and such a yeah, simple thing yeah that that is a great example actually so rather than you know stand somewhere and with the megaphone and shout we need to add our pronouns everywhere people we need to add a no instead this is what i'm doing and the people who are ready for that are, will be like oh what why was that what what does that mean why did you do that so it's a filter really isn't it so just do little things and I don't know, set an example is, is one way of saying it. But in a way, it's just be yourself. Because if I've, I've recently started doing it in one email signature, the one with the podcast, you know. So I've added my pronouns in that. I saw a friend who's got it in her email signature as well. Then I saw it on LinkedIn done. Someone posted about adding their pronouns. It is becoming more common knowledge now, which is good. So the more normal it gets, the better. Yeah. Now... I normally put my phone on silent. <laughs> Naughty. Let me just do well, that now. It's just the universe giving a scent. Yes. Exactly. These are like the things that we can do. <laughs> Go you. <laughs> Thanks. So what would be really fun and exciting for you and aligned for you to create around some of this you know, some of so that would kind of highlight or allow these things to bubble up or bring things to people's minds that they could, that they could, the people who are ready would start to go, oh, what does that mean? I want to learn more. Or people who are in the conversation would want to engage more deeply. Mm -hmm. Like what would be really inspiring to a way to engage people in that way? Something you mm -hmm. could create. Ooh. See, that's, I think that, that kind of hits the nail on the head, really, because as, as well as making graphics for the podcast and podcast promotion, I've been making these little meme graphics. So uh -huh. one was the introduction, you know, with my pronouns and everything. One was asking, how did you know you were cisgender? Um, yeah, so more of that, really. Just little questions I could ask people to make them think or you know, expand their thinking. Hmm. What would that be? Yeah, what would that be? Um, <laughs> I could look at conversations I've had with people and I do, I do highlight snippets like as pull quotes, you know, so I, I highlight bits of the conversation we've had. So I could go through those, I suppose, and take from them some things that I've realized or that I didn't know. But make it, make it an easy and accessible next step for people. Hmm. I'm not sure what that would look like, hmm. but it, that's definitely where I want to. Yeah, yeah, that's law. Yeah, I, I thought that was quite brilliant. Just that simple, yeah. the meme that you created, and mm -hmm. combining your graphic skills with your beautiful, expansive mind and willingness to have this conversation, and in in a way that's framed in expansiveness and, as you said, positivity. That's aware. Right? So mm. that's what I think. The more aware we can be, the less likely we are to step in it. We're going to step in it. We're going to screw up. It's, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but that can be part of the conversation you're having too. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm wondering about that. 
So what do you think about the idea of sharing, for example, that story that you just shared with me that, you know, and even using it as an example, I posted this without realizing. And mm -hmm. a few people came to me and said, you know, actually, that's kind of insensitive. Yeah. To... And I was actually really quite fortunate that they were kind about it and called right. me out. And I thanked them for it. You know, when I messaged them, I said, thank you for educating me. I mean, yeah. just that mm -hmm. models for me, shows me, which happens to go work beautifully within your human design, being that role model that you are, yes? That, that's that, true, yes. That you're, you're walking it for me. I can see that, and I can go, oh, that's how I could, that's one way I could handle this. When someone comes to me with feedback and thought, um, a friend of mine some time ago, I think I had kind of used the term spirit animal in a post when I was in Australia, and I was, right. you know, and she said, well, you might want to consider using this term instead because that's really a very sacred term, and which, you know, I just wasn't mm. thinking because you hear, I hear it, you know, I wasn't thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that's a small thing I can do, and I can take that feedback not as an attack, even if it was an attack. I can mm. step back and say, what if this isn't about me? You know, and you're showing me, yeah. you're modeling for me how I can do that. I mean, a story like that would be very interesting to me as a person who's interested in this gender conversation, and I imagine to others. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I could write a blog post about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm wondering, too, like, what if you were to identify places where these people are having these conversations, where they're hanging out? Like, there are, um, I don't know what they're called. They're not called channels, but there are certainly channels. There are different channels in different mediums. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. of, like, medium.com. There are publications that are about social justice and inclusivity and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. where your articles could be featured. And you're strong. You're strong in them. I've seen your content. So... And if you, so there are lots of different ways to use your talents, both in expression and writing and also graphic design to sort of lead people back, like leave little breadcrumbs back to everything is, has the little. Yeah. I see. I loved when you said breadcrumbs. I thought I really like that concept because I, I don't like being pushy. I feel like I'm just going to leave this here and whoever wants to pick it up can pick it up and whoever doesn't just leave it. Right. And I like, I like that approach to things because sometimes, you know, when Facebook says, oh, someone liked your post, why don't you invite them to like your page? And I'm like, no, they can like my page when they're ready to like my page. Okay, so no. <laughs> and stuff like that, it just makes me a bit cross, really. But there you go. So, um, yeah, a breadcrumb trail. I like that. Yeah. yeah, an intentional breadcrumb trail. So it's sort of like, yes. like you have enough intention. It's not pushy. It's an invitation. Mm -hmm. It's like yes. an invitational breadcrumb trail. Like, oh, if you're interested in this, you can follow me back to Fifty Shades of Gender podcast. You know, like you can mm -hmm. find me here. And there's no push about it. And in the meantime, you're stirring up conversation mm -hmm. around this topic and putting questions in people's minds. And sometimes that that does way more than we know. Just a willingness to question True. it opens up so much. Mm. So if you were as big and as bold as I know that you are, in the, like the most bold self, like the, and there was no fear or limitation and all that conditioning that said, oh, you shouldn't, who are you, but people are having this conversation, the voices are better and all of that thing. Mm-hmm. What would you do? What would you dare? If you didn't have any of that and you just had this you-ness mm -hmm. and this passion and this lovely expansive engagement around this, what, what would be really fun to try? Mm. Well, there are a few people I would like to reach out to that are you know more well known so that that's that's a thing i have a list of people i would like to <laughs> i'd like to interview for the podcast obviously relevant people you know not just anyone um yeah so yeah reaching out to people without thinking you know or without being 
reluctant about it and thinking who, who, who would why would they want to come on my podcast you know that kind of stuff so um yeah i think there's that and i think just just speaking more about it to be honest on platforms like you know this one i suppose you know we're talking now for, for your podcast so yeah that what else I don't know. I think I do already allow myself to just let my attention flow or let, let the energy flow in the direction that it wants to. So I kind of ride each wave as it comes because, you know, also a human design thing, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm multi-passionate. So I, I'm interested in lots of things, always have lots of projects on the go and when people say, oh, just focus on one thing, I'll be like, yeah, just that's kind of like saying stop breathing in a way, you know, so it just this just doesn't work for me. So um, I've learned to rather than think, oh, what's wrong with me? I can't focus on one thing. I'm like, no, this is this is how I roll. This is who I am. So I'm just going to when the energy flows in a certain direction, I'll just go with it for as long as it's there. And when it dies down, it's kind of like surfing, really, although I don't surf. But I can imagine it being like surfing, like you ride the wave while it's there. And then when it stops, you go find another wave and ride that one. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> that's 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 my surfing 101. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's how I see it. Um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> It was it was one of those very broad ones that allows you lots of space to meander in and play ah, and yes, skip about. Good. Yeah, so <laughs> I was asking around, like, you know, what would you create if it wasn't for the, mm. you know, for any doubt, fear, condition thinking, questioning about who are you to do yeah. this? And and so I, what I heard you say was that you would reach out to some more well-known people. And I actually heard you say without thinking about it, but forget that you could still think about it but you'd reach out to them do you know mm. what i mean you just wouldn't bother it wouldn't stop you right like that's, that's what i'm right. getting like like maybe you'd have the thought like oh my god i can't believe i'm doing this but you're as you're typing the email yeah. or the, that's right. the message yeah. right like i can't believe it because that's something that that i see a lot is that oftentimes we're waiting i'm gonna put myself in this bucket too every time i feel like i'm talking in you they we you know no okay i find myself also sometimes waiting for the feeling of inspiration or confidence mm -hmm. instead of just doing it anyway. Yeah. Like what if yeah. it's okay to just do the thing and feel a little bit nervous or fearful about it? Do it anyway. Exactly. Do I have yeah, to wait yeah. for it to all dissipate, right? I mean that's that's my little soapbox. So I heard you say that speaking out more on podcasts like this one or being a guest on other podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, reaching out for those interviews um, and following the waves as they come to you, like that inspiration as it moves, yep. following that is actually a part of it too. It is. And, and it's interesting, like when you said that, I was thinking I'm doing more and more of that. So rather than almost, I think building up to stuff and, and if you're uncomfortable and all that kind of thing, that it can take a lot of energy. So rather than think, oh, I need to do this thing, I need to reach out to this person, but, oh, I don't know if I'm, oh, you know. So rather than do that, I've, I've got a list of people, so I keep a list and never know. And when I get an idea in my head, so I reach out to this person, or maybe you can do this now, then I do that. So that's, that makes it easy. And it's like, before I can talk myself out of things, <laughs> you know, I can, I just do it, like shoot someone an email. Like, I haven't done that with, with anything, anyone, like, who's who's a bit more famous i've done it mostly with with people i'm connected to so but i think the same thing will happen and i know that when the energy is there for it i can ride that wave out and they're like brief short quick waves easy waves fun waves you know that's that's mm -hmm. the thing and another thing just came to mind as well which is something that i would not even have dared say out loud six months ago and 
it's the concept that's it's a concept that's been coming into my head more and more that I'm adopting and it is I want to get paid for who I am I get paid for who I am and really adopting that Mm -hmm. and that brought up a lot of feelings you know when I first when it first came to me I was like really yeah ideally sure but who do you think you are getting paid for who you are? Everyone needs to do something, blah, 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 you know, all, all the, all the stuff. And in a way like the, the podcast and this project, it is really powerful with regards to the, the energy of it. I can feel it. It is powerful. And I would love to be able to focus on it, like completely focus on it. So rather than think in, 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 in ways of having a job and doing work and people paying me for, work I do or time I spend doing things. I love the idea of getting paid for who I am. So I'd love to monetize this somehow, which I can also get a bit conflicted by in my head because I'm very much, I don't like adverts and stuff. So even if someone would say, I'll sponsor you, here's 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 a load of money. I'll be like, well, hang on a minute. I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. And you know, (laughs) all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think what I would do as well, if there weren't all these, you know, limitations, which there aren't really, but you know, um, then I would, I would really embody that. I'd be like, yeah, Mm. damn right. I get paid for who I am and I don't owe anyone a justification or an apology or anything. So that, yes, Mm, that's a big one. It is a big one. (laughs) You know, I had like a hundred percent comfortable, but better than it was six months ago, for sure. (laughs) Just saying it, you just said it and said it publicly. I heard you say this to me before privately, like as a, what if I could, but now it's like, it's progressed to a, yeah, damn. Yeah. Yeah. I could do that. Uh Yeah. (laughs) Like it's, it's got a different energy about it. It's well, it's it's out in the open now. Yeah. So I better, yeah. Put my money where my, you know, podcast is. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I had this thought, and I wonder about this, because when I heard you say it, is that you'd really like to completely focus on this, like mm-hmm. like this, where this energy is for you, like what's really alive for you right now. Like, mm-hmm. And at the same time, it's totally okay to have, I mean, you have these other passionate projects you're passionate about, that, but mm-hmm. this is really alive. So I'm yeah. wondering what it might look like to infuse this aliveness into the other things that you love to do, like into graphic mm. design. And I thought this is a, an interesting, I'm like, this is kind of a strange concept, but what would gender fluid or gender inclusive graphic design and branding be? Mm. Yeah. I've had someone suggest to me before that maybe my my niche could involve, you know, the LGBT community. Um, there is something I well, what what I feel really drawn to still out of all things design that I could be doing is books. I really love doing books. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the the podcast actually started with a book idea. So it was when, you know, the whole Fifty Shades of Grey was all the rage. And um, my, my partner and I were talking about why don't we create like a, a project or a book that contains 50 stories of people all on the gender spectrum, you know, like maybe from one binary to the other. Not that, that it's a straight line, obviously, but, you know, all different perspectives, all different stories, all different labels, 50 shades of. At the time, we wanted to call it Fifty Shades of Trans, but a friend suggested we call it Fifty Shades of Gender, which they were obviously very right about because trans does not, it's not a complete umbrella for gender diversity, which I've since learned, you know, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that started with a book idea. So that is still something that is percolating in my brain. I mean, the podcast kind of came out of that because I started having conversations with people that I recorded and then had transcribed. And then I thought, well, why not use the audio rather than it sitting there? And I thought, oh, podcast. So that's how that happened. Um, the, The 50 stories would be from local people. So what I wanted to do was show the diversity of gender in just one place, really, place like Norwich or surrounding areas. 
So that's still something I want to do. Um, and then my one of my business mentors recently suggested a collaborative book as well to do with LGBT, but in a way that people pay me for it, you know, to, they pay to be in the book and to contribute to the book. So I would do the, um, the collecting of the information and the stories and put the book together, like the, the design bit, I can do that, <laughs> you know? So yeah, so that's something I'm playing with. I just don't quite know what shape that's going to take yet. But I like the idea of that. And also I like the idea of being able to work on books still. And I do like, I mean, like I said, I've got quite unconventional clients. I worked on a book with one lady. I'm just looking over there because they're all on my bookshelf there because I, I love having them on display. So one book is from a lady who talks to trees and it's her workbook to go with her book, uh, If Trees Could Talk, Life Lessons from the Wisdom of the Woods. And that's beautiful. And I loved working on that. Another one is a book called My Father Who Art in Heaven, which is a book by my, my business mentor who um, wrote a memoir about the last few months of her father's life, who then passed away and the connection she's had with him since then. So she's basically, you know, talking to the other side. So I did her book cover. Um, there is also a friend who's a Satanist and he has applied his beliefs and religion, I suppose, to recovering from alcoholism. And that's called Uncover Satan, Recover Thyself. So that's just a little selection of the random and diverse books that I've worked on. And I've just loved every single one of them. And um, there's, there's more. Anyway, so yeah. And I love the idea of being able to work on projects that I feel drawn to. So kind of what I want to move away from, I guess, not just in with, with books, but I think in generally in design is that I just need to be, I think, more particular about who I work with. And that's not, that's not me being arrogant. It's just about picking the right projects and the right people so you can co-create something amazing. And therefore, I think it has to be something for me. I'm not someone who can switch off who I am and just do the graphics work. Right. You know, I feel like I need to have a connection with the, with the project and with the person. And the whole thing needs to feel like, you know, it makes me, it needs to make me feel like, yes, you know, otherwise... Otherwise, it's just a no. And, and I think that's something I've been coming to terms with in the way I work. That it's just really important for me to get that right and get that alignment right. So, hmm. I love this. So what's coming to me as you're saying this? Yeah. As a suggestion, just like kind of toss it out. Because mm -hmm. this is this is something I feel too, right? Like I feel with you, like I just want to like play, like bat, bounce ideas back and forth. Like let's bat some ideas around, so mm -hmm. that you can they can spark something within you or not. You know, you can go like, oh, mm. not that one, oh, this one, yeah. Oh, and what if we did this with it? You know, like that's the kind yeah. of thing that's happening. It feels to me. Yeah. So it's not just about gender or the gender conversation or um, it's really your way of your way of looking at the world. It is you being you, Esther being Esther, mm -hmm. and giving yourself like full permission to be that mm. in anything you choose. So yes. what's interesting to me as an idea is like if you're if you're going to, you've mentioned before books like the books the book design like unconventional book design so rather than like having a niche which is like bleh, 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 okay i see yeah. the usefulness of it that's a conversation <laughs> for another day i get on my own soap box, box about this and people get their knickers yeah. in a twist and uh okay <laughs> but that's kind of like heavy and doing it righty, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Instead, you will naturally start doing that. It will become self-selective. If you share, for example, if you're talking about books, if you share the unconventional titles and designs and stories of the people you've designed for, like if you share that mm. publicly, 
it's going to immediately be attracted to someone who has a rather unconventional topic or who wants design that is aligned with these things, right? Just by mm -hmm. showing them. And I don't know if this, like, something that came to me, I'm like, I'm just in the question of this, like, what if, what if you approached graphic design and branding from a, from a perspective that acknowledges gender bias in colors, fonts, you know, like all of this stuff, right? Like, and actually mm. talked about that. Like, what if you said, like you, you took on pink is for girls and blue is for boys, for example. Like, that's just the first example. And you actually, like, did a blog post about it or did a, a podcast mm. past episode about it or created a meme about it and showed mm. it graphically. Like, or you could have a, you could create a meme and say, like, who's the audience for this? Are they male or female? What gender are they? What does it look like if you are, if you want to be gender inclusive, like stir up the conversation around design mm. and imagery yeah. and branding and like, whoa, I don't see anybody doing that. It's really different. And it's going to automatically draw people who are intrigued by that and they want to explore that for themselves. And it's going to alienate people who are like, what are you talking about? There's male and female and that's it. And like, all right, I can tolerate this gay thing, but that's about, you know, like, yeah. and I don't get this gender fluidity. I don't get that gender identity. Yeah. I don't, and I'm not even going to go there. Right. Yeah. So it's going to drive <laughs> those people away yeah. and you're going to become so magnetic and it's, and there's no strategy in this. It's like, mm. you feel it, you share it. Yeah. It happens to you, you share it. Um, I started doing this recently myself, like it just lightened everything up. Like what if I just talk about my own process? Because inevitably it's going to mirror the people who will want to journey with me. And if I share my own process of asking these questions like what is business for me? How do I do this differently? What if I get rid of the word business entirely and start reframing my relationship with this exchange of energies? Mm. That's the first time I ever said that, Esther. Thank you for being here to allow me to say it because I went, ooh, that was really... Creation at its best. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, that was something. Um, yeah. Anyway, as I just interrupted myself, like, it's, it's very authentic. It's very light. It's just mm -hmm. like, hey, I had this conversation the other day. Or, you know, what if we reinvision envision branding so that it, it's gender is fluid and we don't put people in a demographic psychographic gender category. Hmm. What does that look like? How, and your process is different because now you're thinking That's right. and immediately you're different from every other designer out there. Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly what you recently wrote about, right? So rather than being too focused on what the client needs, and you kind of lose who you are in the process. And I think that's, that's what I've been doing for a long time. And I think that's why I've really struggled with making new, putting new offers out there, no matter what marketing advice I was looking at, no matter how, the, how feminine the approach was and how, you know, um, I don't know. It all like, the, in the end, I did learn to filter and look at the marketing advice coming from people that I resonated with but even then, I just could not bring myself to put any new offers out or do anything like that. I just... Screw offers. What if there are no yeah. offers? What if it's like you just share your experience, you just yeah. be you, mm -hmm. and there's an invitation at the end, like, here's how you can find me. This is what I do. Yeah. You know, like, it could be yeah. something like, um, you know, uh, the, have something about the podcast you know, gender fluid graphic design, unconventional book design, whatever it is, like inclusive. Yeah. I don't know. And I'd be like, oh, like these are the things who it's for. Like it just is, it's so, it's so juicy and different and interesting right off the bat mm -hmm. that people will want to work with you just because of that. And they'll say, hey, do you do this? Do you do that? And you can hmm. say yes or no. Like it's that yes or that's like, no, no, thank you. Either it gives you that, when you, you did this, I got like a tingly feeling, almost like, oh, that's an exciting project. So this way you yeah. don't have to pigeonhole yourself. The yeah. only thing you're limiting yourself is what you choose to express, your mm -hmm. own self-expression. So it could be as vast as you would like to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And interestingly, the first page I did on my website, like 
because of all my different projects, I decided it's time to bring everything together and just make things simpler and easier. So the first page I did on my website was the book design page. And I spent ages on it, fine tuning it, because I'm very details focused and a bit of a recovering perfectionist. So I, I spent a while on that page, making it look exactly the way I wanted. And that was just so much fun. And even in the past when people say, oh, you need to blog, you need to do this, you need to do that. I was just, I was always really stuck. And I was like, I don't know what to say. And like, even thinking about the subject, you know, design and branding, I was like, it's just not, you know, it just felt like meh. And, but since I've focused on expressing myself, it's like the floodgates have opened, uh -huh. you know, yeah. it's like, what? <laughs> There's all this stuff here. I didn't even know what was there, but there it is, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That makes such a difference for sure. Yeah, yeah. What would, I wonder what that would look like if you just gave yourself, if you gave, not just, if you gave yourself permission to relentlessly express yourself, however you're moved in all and any of these mediums, and it sounds like you're kind of right now being drawn to maybe put them under one umbrella so that, which, why not, you know? Mm -hmm. What would that look like if you really gave yourself permission to just self-express ride the waves as you find them, as they find you. Mm. I think that would be perfect. Yeah. And a question to possibly live into and say, oh, what does it mm. look like now? What does it look like now? Yeah, checking in all the time, really. Yeah. And, so, and, and a lighthearted thing. Coming, moment. Yeah, yeah. It's a moment. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think it's about becoming more aware as well. Like, so before you go down that rabbit hole of like, before you get to the bottom and you think, I really don't like this anymore. You know, what, by the time you're on your way there, you're like, oh, hang on, backtrack, back up. This is not where I want to go. And I think the sooner you catch yourself going there, the more you're able to, you know, pivot and go in the direction you do want to go in. So you waste less time and energy, and that's that's really that's really important. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, I see you stepping more and more into that and exploring it. Yeah. Gently and playfully, mm. and experimentally, like it's like that's how. Yeah. It seems it it would like to happen. Um, yeah. Mm. I had a thought, lost it. It will be back if it's important. Cool. That's right. So <laughs> what would you like to what would you like to take from this conversation we've had today? Oh. That's always a funny one. Like I my my brain is already like processing, lots of processing. And I will get juicy bits from this like later on and tomorrow and moving forward. So what I'm, the thing that is most in my mind at the moment is how to bring it all together even more because the, my design business, like my brand is Zesty. So I've had Zesty Design for quite a few years. And then I started Zesty Books and Zesty Branding and, you know, too many Zesty domains for sure. <laughs> so I brought it all together. I found a domain that's zesty.me. So that's what I'm using at the moment. So I'm bringing everything together. And yeah, just I feel like it's given me some more bits or puzzle pieces about how to maybe integrate and expand that even further because I have neglected it a little bit since I started the podcast, you know, since I actually started putting the episodes out. So my own website has been, it's very minimal, <laughs> let's put it that way because <laughs> there's lots to add. Um, yeah, so it'd be nice to, I think, expand on that a bit more now like yeah as i find my flow with the whole podcasting as things hopefully get that's, easier and more efficient that's that's what i'm feeling and you know check this out for yourself that it's sort of like the wave right now is on the podcast and you're riding it yeah and it's it is informing the rest it just doesn't look like it on the surface you know like mm. so if we look at conventional ways of doing business if you're not taking actions on the thing, nothing's happening. But mm. is that how nature works? 
Not is that how the process of creativity works? That just because nothing's happening on the outside, does that mean nothing's happening? Like mm -hmm. there's germinating, there's a seed, there are roots yeah. growing downward and we can't see them beneath the soil, you know, like, ten, and yeah. oh, it's going to blossom when it's ready or maybe right. it's happening over here. So the sense I have is that like, you know, you can create that way by riding the waves and when it's time to add to the website, and expand there just like you spent the time on the book design page because it was doing something for you to clarify mm -hmm. but, and like True. oh and create in that like getting the yes feeling right it's going to mm. inevitably overflow but it might not look the way it's supposed to according to whomever or even to yeah. ourselves yeah and we what don't if, know what if you what haven't neglected it if yeah, you haven't neglected it. You're just riding the wave that's here to ride. And as soon as yeah. that's the ride, the wave, you're going to ride that one. That's right. Yeah. And I think it's easy to underestimate what simple things like just having fun and playing with something can have, you know, with regards to other things that we're doing. It might be exactly what we need, whereas we berate ourselves and thinking, oh, I can't, I can't take time to do this because I have to do this and I have to be on social and I have to, you know, make my lead magnet and create my funnel and blah. That's just stuff that's never resonated with me and I can't even, I just can't even, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's, it's just that when you are doing something that's in flow and that's fun, it's important do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wasting time or indulging yourself. Well, maybe you're, you're indulging, indulging yourself. There's nothing wrong with that either, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So where can people find you if they'd like to connect with you? Where shall we send them? Well, there's uh, my website, which is zesty.me. And as I said, it's, it's quite minimal at the moment. Uh, but obviously the, the gender project is 50shadesofgender.com and the podcast is on all the platforms. <laughs> I didn't stop at Google and Apple and Spotify. I just went and launched it on like 30 other ones. I don't know. I don't do things by halves. So um, <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's all on the website. So you can find it on there. Transcript and things is also on there. Show notes. Yep. Those two places, basically. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing with me, Esther. This is great. And I look forward to being a part of supporting and witnessing your journey as it oh. moves forward. Thank you for sharing your genius with me. Hey, thanks for joining me for today's Wild Spire Conversation. If you'd like to receive a weekly wild creation email from me filled with more inspiring stories, marketing experiments, playful questions, new podcast episodes, videos and freebies, and anything else I'm playing with, go to theawakenedbusiness.com forward slash wild creation. Until next time, may you know yourself as the gorgeous wild creation you are.